Good afternoon. I'm going to be uh, making this presentation with my good friend, uh, Mr. Lenro, who chairs the, uh, the ONF Northbound Interface Working Group. And uh, before we started, I just wanted to uh, extend uh, greetings from uh, Dr. Dan Pitt, who's the executive director of ONF, who was not able to be here. And he's actually uh, uh, on a well-deserved vacation in Israel, and he'll be back in a week or so. But uh, he had just asked me to stand in. So what we want to do today is talk about an extremely important area that actually has implications not just for SDN, of course, but for NFE as well, and that is the northbound interface. And um, the chart on the right indicates the challenge with the northbound, which is how, what is northbound and, and, and how far north is north? And when we actually started this effort a couple of years ago, the, uh, one of the biggest challenges we had is to try to come up with a model so that we could actually address uh, the problem and create a problem statement that we could actually come up with at least a reasonable solution to. Because if you look at this chart, what we see is that different, the term we use is latitudes or different layers of northbound interfaces, depending if we're talking about um, uh, network services that are embedded within an SDN controller or the actual, the highest level, which is the, the problem we chose to solve, which is how net, uh, SDN applications interact with the SDN control layer. And um, what are some of the goals of this project? As the first one is to provide a, uh, a portable NBI, which stands for Northbound Interface, uh, API framework that allows for the flexibility to actually reside at different layers within this model. Portability means that we're able to pick up the applications and move them to different controllers without having to materially change the applications. And Dave will talk about how we're going to address that in just a minute. And then we want to ensure that uh, different controller vendors are free to, in to, to innovate. We don't want to constrain the overall controller implementation based on this uh, high-level, intent-based, northbound uh, interface and, and API framework. The goals that I, I, I actually had listed are actually listed or are specified in the charter for the Northbound Interface Working Group, which is a document that's available on the, uh, the ONF public website at the URL that's shown. There's also some additional information there, so we'd encourage everyone to uh, visit the ONF site if you haven't done so already. And with that, I want to uh, introduce uh, David to talk about this. He's been involved in... Uh, northbound interface activity at a couple of different companies now. And he and I go uh, back a couple companies as well. So we've been working together for a long time. And um, he, again, he's the chair of the activity. And he's also been one of the champions in trying not only to focus on this problem from the ONF's perspective, but from the broader industry spec perspective, as you'll see in a minute. So Dave. Thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, so. You know, obviously, I've got uh, like five or six minutes to talk about a really big, complex topic. We're, we're not going to do the deep dive. I'm going to tease you a little bit and, and introduce some concepts. And uh, if you want to learn more, as, as Mark suggested, go to the ONF website or, or uh, contact me directly. So while we recognize that there are lots of different layers and everybody's southbound is somebody else's northbound, at the end of the day, we're kind of splitting things into the things that are part of the controller itself which effectively create a black box. And then there's an interface to that, which is what most people are going to see. So we, we call that the most northbound interface, just to differentiate it from all the layers that, that live below. Um, and so that's, that's what we're mostly focused on as, as our first big project. Uh, the group is just over a year old now as, as a working group. Um, and, and so we're really just kind of moving from the analysis phase into, into the implementation phase. Um, one of the things that's really interesting about this is, so let, let me define what we mean by intent for a minute. And so traditionally, the way we've operated networks is some person tells another person how they want the network to behave, and that person types in all kinds of obscure commands um, that basically tell the net, you know, describe exactly how the network should be set up. 
And in contrast to that, the intent-based networking approach is you basically don't describe the network, you describe the application and its behavior and what it needs. You hand that to the northbound interface of the controller and the controller figures out how to build a network to, to meet those needs. And so it really turns the operating model upside down and, and more importantly, it enables millions of people who are never gonna understand anything about OSPF or OpenFlow or any of these low level networking concepts to get the network to do what they want. If you understand your application, you can get the network to do what you want and you don't have to know anything about networking. So, so that's the basic approach. Um, we're, we're broken down into some subgroups uh, where Tina Su runs a, a group that is building sort of common framework elements across all the different use cases and, and intent uh, concepts. Uh, we have a group that we call the user applications, uh, which is to distinguish from things which are essentially orchestration systems and cloud managers. And that's what the last group, the cloud and data center group, is, is really looking at how do cloud operating systems interact with, with the network controller. Um, and so you start out and it sounds like a pretty good idea to make it easier to use the network in this way, but along the way, some other really interesting properties kind of pop up with respect to intent. And so uh, the first two are kind of related. Intent is invariant in the sense that if I say Bob needs to be able to access the internet, that doesn't change because we switched from Cisco to Brocade. It doesn't change because a link went down. The what you want from the network is invariant and doesn't change as a result of the state of the network, um, which also makes it portable. It allows you to leave all the details out of your integration that are protocol specific, vendor specific, media specific, any of those kinds of things aren't part of intent by definition. If it's got any of those low level non-portable constructs in it, you haven't gotten to intent yet. Um, it's composable in the sense that if you create several different SDN services in, in isolation, that were never designed to cooperate with each other, what happens if you run two of them is they step all over each other and the whole thing rolls over and dies. That's kind of the state of the art in SDN right now is we've got lots of single services that can't cooperate with any other services. And so composable is the idea that we can take these services that don't know anything about each other, put them together in sequence and have them run concurrently in a way where they, they don't get in each other's way. I think that's really the thing that, that made the intent crusade uh, appealing to people. The portability thing was nice, some other things were nice, but when we, people recognized that basically we don't have a way to do composition in SDN today and that this is the best solution we've got on the table right now, that, that really uh, took it over the top. Um, it's also sort of positionally independent and location independent, so it scales out. You can have one controller and you can pass it the intent description for an entire network with a million ports, or you can have a thousand controllers and you can pass that same description to all 1,000 of them, and then locally they can take the piece of that intent that matters in their local domain and they can implement it. So instead of having to build one massive monolithic system in the middle that can support all the growth as the network scales out, the ability to uh, render is the, use, the word we use to kind of transition from the intent to the rules that are in the switches you can render that intent locally without having to understand the entire global world. So you split things down and, and it scales much better. And finally, intent provides context. If you try to look at the low level rules going into devices and figure out if they conflict with each other, it's virtually impossible to do that. If you look at the intent, it's much easier because you have the context. It's not what's the match and action, it's what's Bob trying to do? And from that, you can figure out whether you know the rules going into the switch are, are consistent or not. So really just this calendar year, this has really started to take off in terms of the number of people that see the value of this and want to uh, participate and, and get involved in this process. And in, in early January, we hosted an event at, at HP Labs in Palo Alto, and we invited 70 attendees from probably 40 different companies who are all working on different variations on this theme, kind of getting all the minutia out of the user interface making it simpler to operate these networks. And where historically what happens in that case is you get 40 different implementations um, and then you try to standardize it and it's too late because you've got this complete confusion loose in the wild. This is a really, really unique opportunity in the sense that there is none of this that has leaked into the wild. If we can figure out a common interface that we're all gonna use for this, we don't have to go back and clean up the 40 interfaces that already shipped and deal with all those problems. So this is a really unique moment in time. If we act now, we can get this right initially and not have to go back and, and fix it with a lot of technical debt. 
And that's, that's why I think we've been pretty successful in uh, convincing people of that, getting people from all these disparate efforts to kind of come together and work with us uh, in the combination of uh, an ONF project within our working group to sort of define the information models and, and the common data. And then there's a project we've created in the Open Daylight Project, which is basically the reference implementation of this interface. So between the two, and please come on down and join the party and, and help us build this stuff. Between the two, we're gonna both define this easier to use interface and build an implementation to prove that it works and to provide uh, guidance for people who wanna build uh, you know, more optimized or, or implementations with, with a different focus. And so finally, there's a couple of uh, references here to articles uh, that Mark and I wrote for SDN Central following that intent summit this past January that provide more detail of who is there and, and what it's about and how you can get involved if, if you'd like to. Thank you. Sorry, I forgot a slide. Uh, so this is a kind of a cartoon that describes the work we're doing. There's, there's a piece of this which is controller agnostic and is designed to work with any SDN controller. And that lives in the ONF repository. These artifacts will be consumed by both the ONOS SDN controller project in order to produce an ONOS based version of this northbound interface. And then separately, an open daylight project that, that I referred to, which will take those same artifacts and build a open daylight northbound interface using that same information model. And we'll be able to prove that you can do your integration or create your intent description for some application, run it on one of these controllers, change nothing, run it on the other controller, and essentially get the same behavior from the network. Kind of prove that we've achieved the controller agnostic aspect of this. So uh, we hope to demonstrate that at the uh, Open Network Summit in July of this year and uh, probably see a lot of you there again. Thank you. Questions. So uh, questions from the audience? Parviz. of excitement going on here. The intent here at the application layer versus what you want to really hide the um, southbound or like in ODL, the southbound different flavor of the APIs that are already defined. Yep. So the SAL, whether uh, MD or other SAL application, is that the intent is captured by the SAL that can hide the network specification and configuration from the application layer, or that's more into the intent? Could you? Yeah, the way I think of it is the intent engine, if you will, sort of lives above the, the service abstraction layer that you described uh, and essentially translates pure intent into some southbound interface, which you then go, go across the cell to, to access. But it should be kind of a standalone, and if you wanted to port it to a system that had a different SAL, you know, that, that should be uh, contained to the, to the southern end of it. You shouldn't have to kind of throw the whole thing away and start over. I will, oh, a question regarding, uh, actually, how uh, you can uh, ensure that the, the uh, changes in the network configuration implemented for the intent API uh, are not uh, somehow uh, modified by the legacy APIs being used. And say if you have some applications uh, running uh, some plugins for the ODL, uh, how they will uh, interact with each other so, uh, in, in, the, in that way that the intents will be consistent with each other? Great question. Um, and the answer is kind of hard to swallow for some people, but the answer is this is the only NBI you're allowed to use. You know, it's, it's the arbitrator, it's the thing that makes sure people don't step all over each other. And if you go around it and use the low level interfaces directly, it all falls apart. So we, we've actually almost done a complete 180. Initially we said, we'll never be able to find a single common northbound interface. There's gonna be lots of them. Well, it turns out you just can't build you know, coherent systems that way. And we're turning it around and saying, we're gonna to have to figure out how to be smart enough to get all of the different kinds of things we wanna ask the network to do to flow through a single integrated interface.
Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you.